Hey, greetings, my friends. James Jordan, Best Networker Live, just coming to you today. Uh, this is episode four in the Marketing Sensei series. I have, uh, you know, someone that I've connected with a little while ago um, that's absolutely just crushing it, and he's going to be sharing with you his story and his results and how you can go out and start to create similar results, you know, in your life and in your business. And you know, with that being said, I have the honor uh, to be interviewing, you know, Tony Cohen from New York. So, Tony. Uh, the real Tony. Just want to say welcome and appreciate you, brother. How are you? I'm fantastic. I don't know if it's you're going to say it's an honor at the end of this conversation, James. <laughs> I'm saying, oh no, <laughs> I just got torpedoed. So the best networker alive. All right, good. I'm in safe hands. Bring it. What do you got for me? Awesome. So you know, Tony, what we want to start out with is you know just share just share your story. Share where, your background, where you come from. And you know, kind of what's led you up to where you're at right now. Okay, this is normally what I do with other people and blindside them and drop them right in the hole. But thanks for that. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's a case of how long have you got? I'm not. I'm not going to go into too many details. Um, you know, there's the yeah. I could I could whine and complain like everyone else about how bad my <laughs> life was and blah 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 blah. Um, the reality, you know, I, I truly believe adversity is life's great motivator. So, you know, it doesn't matter what happens to us in life, it's, it's how we deal with it that is, is, is the only thing that really counts. Um, what I will talk about, because I, I get a feeling here that this is uh, where you want to take this, is from more of a, a business point of view, not about how I do my hair or who my clothing designer is or anything like that. <laughs> Same was plural. Um, so, you know, my, my background, uh, business, from a business point of view, I, I've done a few, well, I've done quite a lot of things in my life. Uh, from a business point of view, I was the guy that by default ended up knocking on doors for a living because I was starving and I needed to make some cash straight away. And I was absolutely crap at it. But because I was so hungry, I figured out how to get in houses to get fed, first of all. Then I figured out how to get fed and get paid. And then I figured out how to get fed drunk, paid, and show others how to do it. <laughs> I, I see you not, okay? And then, you know, that, I started showing more, and more, and more, and more, and more, and more, and in my best stint, I, um, I went from, I got brought in by an ex-business partner to start something, I went from uh, $20 in my first week to $28,739 in my eighth week. Nice. $20 a week, almost 30000 So all I did was just be me. So my background has always been that type of thing. However, my, my, old, my, my old boss and later business partner did describe me as the be best networker on the planet. However, and it's a big however, that was before I met you, but that's not the however. <laughs> the however is, as a networker, so networking which most people don't grasp is a selfless industry. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know who's going to watch this, and this is all on you. Uh, so if my language slips, I don't. <laughs> Go right ahead. Oh, Go on. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> um, most people involved, there's, there's a huge difference between networking and network marketing. There's a huge difference between marketing and network marketing. But when people put the two together, the reason it has such a negative connotation, let's, let's call it as it is, it does, is because most people are complete morons and they don't get it, okay? They, you know, they, they, they just go like, come and buy the new iPhone 7 because I want to be <laughs> my family and need a Rolls Royce, so here's a picture of me with a Rolls Royce. I just go like, next, bye. I don't deal with them at all. So networking is a selfless act in terms of being able to just chat with anyone about anything. Never business. Just, you know, I, I do it. I will put, that phone was on zero. So my, my last stint in, uh, in the sales world, I was North America's biggest trader. Uh, I ran North America's biggest trader for natural gas and electricity uh, in a, a brokerage out of, well, business out of Wall Street. And I walked out one day for a sandwich and changed my phone number. Just enough. Seven days a week, 20, well, not 24 hours a day, 18 hours a day, blah, 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 blah. My head was imploding. Yeah, you know, it was great, but then I just thought, I don't want to be in that world. 
and this was, you know, this was after I got dragged back in like Michael Corleone. I, I you know, I'd done well um, around about 2002, bailed out, went traveling, doing stuff, having a good time, got dragged back in by the power of Facebook. Someone mm. found me, can you give me a hand for two weeks? And, you know, two years later, I'm, I'm self-imploding. Changed my phone, changed my phone number, zero numbers in my phone. I put 5,000 numbers from zero in a phone in two years. How? I just talk to anyone. I'll go to the coffee shop now and this on the subway, on the street, anyone. I just say hello. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, <clears throat> everyone's got a story. So, you know, when we, when we take what we find in life and we become sincerely interested in people, we become great network Earth. not talking about marketing. Um, most network marketing people I stay away from. I cannot stand them. They are the most annoying people in the freaking <laughs> world. <laughs> However, it is also um, a wonderful industry tainted by idiots. Uh, you know, if you're watching this and you're offended, I, I don't fucking care. Okay. They're probably those are the broke people that are offended. Those people aren't making yeah, any money. Just, you know what? They've just got issues. <laughs> their issue is no. Their issue is it's all about them. I did, um, you know, I, as you know, James, and, and many people watching this will know. I have I have a, a YouTube channel like many, like many people. I'm assuming this is going on yours. So mine, the real Tony Cohen. I did one. I think it was yesterday, the day before, called "What's in It for Me." And it was a real story about two people, not in, in, in this industry, in the in direct sales industry. One of them was, you know, went to earning millions and millions and millions a year, year in, year out. And the other one just, I don't know where he is, dropped off the map. One, had, one was selfless, the other one was selfish. So when someone's networking and connecting with a purpose, it shines through, you can read through it. You asked me to do this interview. We've never met. As far as we know, we've never met. You asked me to do an interview and I said yes. Okay? Because you didn't come across as someone that was going to necessarily utilize it. Uh, and, you know, one of the questions I asked you before we got on here, I said, I'm not doing anything, there's any product placement or anything like that, I'm not mentioning products or anything like that. Whether I'm utilizing them or not, that's not, that's not what it's about. So if, if there's something uh, I can add to your stream, as far as networking goes, it's a selfless act. Go out, you connect, and you take a sincere interest in people. Um, from there, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to let you have a word in a second. I'm, I'm hogging, I'm hogging your limelight, James. It's all you, brother. It's all good. <laughs> from there, you know, people ask me what I do. Can you tell me about your business? No. It, it you know what? Over the last day or two, uh, I think. Uh, if I'm right and saying I may be wrong, I'm not naming companies. I think a couple of companies have, have crashed out. One of them was fairly obvious it was unsustainable six months ago to me when someone pitched me on it. Oh no, a dozen people pitched me on it. Um, and, you know, and I, I, it's like, they're like the vultures. I'm like, oh great, a business has gone down. Woomph, let's spam the crap out of them with our new. Wonder Bread, best deal on the planet, there's only one left. <laughs> you know what? I mean, that's not what it's about. You know what? People might have been working really hard on things and from no fault of their own or whatever, they're in a situation, the last thing they want to hear or see is a bunch of people throwing crap at them that all looks the same, where, you know, the, the, the I believe the, the true act of networking, and I did a, a real inter interesting interview the week with, with uh, well, it's more than an author, Dov Barron. If you've not read his books or followed his stuff, follow him on, on these flat like me's everywhere, D-O-V-B-A-R-O-N. And one of the things he said was, you know, we, we network with no purpose in mind, but his first thing in meeting someone is, what can I do to serve you? How can I help you? I'm here to help. I'm not here to tell you about my new Wonder Bread, or my new XYZ skin supplement, oil, gas, blah, 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 blah. 
it's you know networking is an, is a, is a thing purely about individuals about people it's not about products it's not about pitching it's not about selling stuff it's just connecting so you know i um like like many people i get sent a lot of stuff and within a minute or two i'll i like i generally i'll just go no it's not for me the approach is just wrong i don't like it i get a bad vibe about it I'm not interested and you know i was taught I use the word taught very loosely, <laughs> as I will use it with the same disdain. I use the word mentor for this person. His approach was speak to anyone within three foot of you and tell them what you've got to offer. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie? I think yep. this guy wrote the, the, the polar opposite. <laughs> how to lose friends and piss off everyone you come in contact with. <laughs> but I thought that was how it was done it because he posted bullshit about how he was doing so much business and da 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 and, da, da, da. and you know I never actually saw him doing any business and I grew a very deep distrust for the whole thing in the industry in general which is now you know I, I tend to distance myself away from network marketing people. Um, all my business that I do and yeah I do have network marketing businesses you know, if they're the right sort of thing for me. Uh, why? If I don't like a lot of the people, hey, you know, I don't have to deal with them people. There's a, there's a, like anything, there's a percentage of people I do like and deal and deal with on a, on a business or a personal level. Um, it is, you know, the quick and fast way to get an idea into many people's hands. Um, we can relate this to, um, you know, Mary Kay with, with Cheap cosmetics or cheaper because I shouldn't use the term cheap. I don't know cosmetics. Quick way, but you know it's a matter of you know they said the 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 old thing with with um, a friend of mine was head MD of uh, Saatchi and Saatchi is one of the world's big advertising agencies, and he said the absolute best way. I was asking you know he's, he's like the the advertising guru. What's the best job? And he said oh, no doubt about it. The absolute best way is word of mouth. And he said, you know, these days word of mouth is uh, social media, is word of mouth infinitely cubed. And I went, yeah, I agree with that. So it's all word of mouth. So it, you know, it lends itself to if something is good and it's worth getting out there, and the same way social media is used in, I don't know, food industry or, or movie industry, you know, the amount of posts I see, and I'm, I'm, I'm drifting across here. Uh, social media is an extension of life, meaning if you think your Facebook is full of idiots, go look in the fucking mirror, because that's the first one. <laughs> social media is a reflection on life. If you've got really interesting people on your social media, or really driven people, or really, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so, 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 Tony, let me... Let yep. me interrupt really, really quick, right? So, you know, that analogy that you just used was super important, right? So if a person's sitting there asking you, well, Tony, how do I attract, you know, those quality people that I would want to uh, work with and network with, how do I become that person or what do I do to find those people and introduce myself to them and start to build a relationship with them? What would you say to that person that's looking for that? Okay. That's a good point. Um... The, the term selfless leaps out again, and, it, and this is twofold. I started out my social media with the same as everyone else, with zero. Um, and now I would say, you know, I'm, I'm always around about 100,000 people either follow me directly, I'm in contact with, or through groups that I set up and run. Um, most of mine is through Facebook, that's just my choice. I know other people do a lot more on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever. It's just my choice. So, did it start out like that? Well, the analytics now. Where when I first got on Facebook a few years ago, um, my interests were different, and I was in a different place, and I attracted a bunch of people from that crowd. But you know, here's here's something I've noticed: um, Facebook, uh, social media in general. You know, and the analytics suggest that if you if you post um, UFC. I went to see UFC the other night. All of a sudden, it alters the analytics. 
if you post cats, it alters the analytics. So what you'll find is there's a stream of people that might have something or some subject in common. Once you get that ball rolling, my advice is be yourself. This is my advice, what it's worth, okay? Be yourself. Um, you know, if if we're trying to please other people, I think it was, I can't remember who said it. I can't remember who said it, but he's not, he's not doing great at the moment. So I don't know the rule to, to success, but the rule to failure is trying to please everyone. If you're not pissing off as many people as are loving you, you're sat on the fence doing nothing. When people talk about, oh, I block this person and block that person, I don't need to. They fucking block me first because I pissed them off that much. But I don't care. <laughs> it's me being me. I, I don't care. I'm not worried. Used to be, well, I've got 100 friends and someone's, I've dropped one and what's going on? No, it's just like, it doesn't matter. It's just life, you know? In life, we lose and gain friends. To, to quote uh, the late Jim Rohn, who was Tony Robbins, one of Tony Robbins' mentors, we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So, someone sends me a friend request. There's certain people that if they've got one friend in common and I see that certain person, I'll just accept it. Um, if they've got, you know, a bunch of friends in there, if you are on privacy mode, if you've not got your photograph up there, if people can't see your stuff, and I get it, some people like it that way. Uh, if you've got photos of your kids, you don't want the word to go to see them, that's fine, you know? But if, you, if you're using it as a networking tool, whether it's to expand your interests or your business. So if your interests are, I don't know, something topical, Kanye West, and you can set up a, listen, it might be the wrong guy, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't see the Grammys, whatever it was. Um, if, you know, if that's your, you can just as easily set up a group of something. I, I set up something the other day, because where I live here, um, there's lots of street art graffiti. And I was posting them on my wall, really good, and I'm getting these comments, I thought, you know, I'll set up a group, um, I don't know what it's called, street art something or other, and um, street art of the planet, maybe, I don't, I don't remember, and I put some pictures up there, and before, within a month, the group runs itself, I don't do anything, but what it's done is it's drawing people in, so what that does is it's connecting, and it's, it's something you may find interesting or may not, and this is the power of the, the world, the global, you know, the, we're in a global situation, anyone's not realized that, they're still just living in their own little, you know, bubble. Here's what happened, I, I set up this thing, I put some pictures on there, I'm getting picked people, you know, I, I invited a few, um, added a few friends who I thought are into arts or things like that. And within a week or two, I saw this post about an art cafe opening in Harlem. I live in Spanish Harlem. And I thought, that's interesting. So I put on, you know, I went to just had a look at the event. Da, 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 da. I saw who posted it. So I looked at that. And I just, yeah, you know what? I, I rarely, rarely send friend requests. I just thought, she looks interesting. Click, send, accept, back. So I sent a global thing out within hours. I'm having coffee with a lady that lives across the street. But we've gone all around the Facebook world, never met before, actually drinking the same coffee shop that only holds about 15 people. Never met. Wow. Wow. So the power of it, and as a result of that, that opens doors to other things. You know, I get invited to different events and different groups. So as we do this, and you know, to take it forward for people to network, if you're the sort of person that I used to be, when I first got on Facebook, nothing personal, James, but unless you were smoking hot and in a bikini, you weren't getting a friend request from me, and I've got a strange feeling Facebook <laughs> on that analytic, because I went to the jail numerous times. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know, I've stopped posting bikini pictures because of all the friend requests, bro. Seriously. <laughs> um, but no, and it, it's like, you know, you do that, but that was all like not being selfless, like, wow, Ooh, I want to talk to her, I want to talk to her. So what I generally do from there, and most, pretty much all mine are inbound now, the only time I'll send friend requests out is if it's someone I've actually physically met and I'm with, and I'll, if they've not got the phone, I'll just say, 
stick your, stick your uh, Facebook in there, boom, done. Or occasionally people like Gov or, you know, sometimes people will tag someone else. Some of that, that I'm connected with and I think is uh, interesting. You know, I might say, oh, you know what, da, 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 I did this interview with so-and-so, so-and-so, they've got some great stuff going on. So I'll just send a thing across, you know, on someone else's word. But what I, what I don't do, um, I never pro, I never talk about business. To do business with me is like pulling teeth. I won't even tell people. If you look at my Facebook, it doesn't even say anything. You know, they might be, <laughs> you know, and the most common question I get asked in boxes is, what do you do for a living? What do you mean? You were, last week we got asked three times, are you a restaurant critic? Why? You always seem to go out in New York eating great food. No, it's New York, you know. What do you do? Oh, I have a few businesses. You know, in the early days, what do you do? Check my link. Check my spam. Look at my garbage. Okay. Now, I'm just like, I'm not really into what do you do. I've got a few online businesses, which is what I do. I've got a few things going on online. Um, and from there, you know, can, can you send me a link? I still don't. I'll get talking now. You know, it might take. It, it's not. It's not one bam link done finished. That's not building a relationship. I'm not saying you can't do business that way. You can, but not sustainable. Because those people who do business that fast will probably drop off quite that fast as well. Uh, I agree. The I agree. Then again, on the flip side of that, when I look at businesses, I'm the guy that just, yep, yeah, that makes sense, done. 15 minutes, done. However, and here's the big however, I will ask about them. I don't get to send them. So, you know, if there's a situation, I'm in a transition, uh, whatever it may be, you know, there's two or three people, and it's, you know, without name dropping here, I mean, there's obviously one person I work very close to with. I believe you've already interviewed our friend with that. Yep, Darren Little. Yep, the man with the hat, and um, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So you know, sometimes take a look at this. You know, yeah, it's good. Or no, it isn't. But the amount of garbage out there, and you know, I'm not sure. I'm not trying to be derogatory. I'm trying to say to people, you know, it, they say it's a two-year, a two-year learning curve, and I went through it. So if I can help someone go through it a bit quicker, and you know, take take them on other things, and you know, we, we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with. When you when someone's sending me deals that you know, what was the one last? Oh, about a month ago, it's five dollars in. You get your five dollars back, and you make your one point seven million a month within six months. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't even laughing. Yeah. speechless, really. <laughs> Okay, and you've just approached me with so, it. If it was that good, yeah. So Tony, you think you to be right? right? Yeah. So Tony, so right. You know, we've talked about you know all the crap that's out there, right? Yep. Now, let's say someone has a legitimate business, right? And let's say they're looking to find out what happened inside of your mind where you went from like earning like twenty dollars a week within eight weeks of making you know like thirty thousand dollars and doing that on a consistent basis like what triggered what happened inside of your head that really caused you to produce that, that result because what a lot of people do is they'll look at the outside result and they'll just keep asking oh how did you do it how did you do it how did you do it when you and I both know what's really important is what's going on up here so that you can really manifest that type of result so what would you say to people that are looking to they have a good company right that that has good financial standing it's going to be around right they have great products what would you say to that person that's looking to make a shift and to create breakthroughs here's what happened with me on that particular situation very simple someone laughed at me <laughs> that's what happened i you know i got brought to canada and it was a it was a straight direct selling door to door gig at the time and the figures I was told was 10k a week. If you do this, 10k a week. And I didn't believe the figures. I was in, I don't know, Europe somewhere at the time. So on a moment's notice, within two days, I'm flown in. Uh, no plan, no, no nothing. Just packed a couple of bags. So when you, when you believe the source, and this is as important, the person that told me that had done things within the past. 
So, and I'd always done well with him, but I got a, a good vibe working with him, someone I enjoyed working with, and I think that's as important as anything else. If, I mean, I joke about this a lot. If you send me a video of a white guy with a suit and tie on, I'm going to turn it on and turn it off as fast. Not interested. Just <laughs> it's the wrong fit for me because even if I take it further at some point, it's going to go into breakdown and I'm going to walk my mouth as I generally do. It's not a fit for me. Um, I know, is that generalizing? Yeah, that's generalizing, but it's not, it's just not me. You know, I've got to, to me, that whole thing is why, you know, why would you need to do that? If you're a guy in flip flops sat on a beach somewhere working off a laptop, yeah, I, you know, I don't want to be a, a white guy in a suit and tie. I want to be the guy in the flip flops on the beach. So that's who I'm going to connect with. So, you know, someone laughed at me. There was two, a uh, couple of guys and they ran offices at the time in the big cities in Canada, um, Toronto, Montreal. And, you know, I, I think the, the figure was we had to do, to get 2,000 clients a week to make $10,000 each between two people. Now, the second person that was supposed to work with me never showed up, so I'm on my own. So these guys, I said, well, you're doing these numbers? Yeah, we're doing these. Da, 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 da. Okay, give me eight weeks and I'll beat you. And they both, they all fell apart laughing at me. How are you going to do that? Oh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. And that's what my fuel, that was my fuel. And I mentioned earlier at the beginning, the adversity is life's greatest motivator. There's people out there that, you know, the majority want to see me fail, want to see you fail, want to see everyone fail. That's the reality. Unfortunately, a lot of those people are our closest people, or my, you know, were our closest people, family, friends, people we went to school with, and for reasons of their own. You could say it's jealousy, they don't want to lose you as a friend, they think you're going to be an asshole if you get some money, da, 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 da. and hey, some people are, okay, but generally they're the same people that were assholes without money as well. It's not a big deal. <laughs> but, um, what got me there, I was fueled, fueled incest, focused on proving these people wrong because they laughed at me. So, you know, we're all very different, but generally people that have worked with me for years know to get me to do something would tell me I can't do it, and I would just take the bait. I don't do that as much anymore because it didn't matter what that thing was, you know. You see that girl there? I bet you can't get her dancing on the bar top with you. Yeah, sure I can. Watch this. I just do stupid shit because someone told me I couldn't do it. <laughs> I didn't matter what it was, okay? I bet, you know what? I bet you couldn't take the fur hat off that woman and dance in the middle of the street with it. Oh, that's easy. Watch. You know? I don't do it too much anymore, but that is a fuel for me. And it's almost like an adversity thing. Um, so, you know, I, I come from a place of adversity. So I get it. And it's, you know, if someone's hungry, you know, my motivation when I first started knocking on doors was I was hungry, hungry, physically hungry. So I knew if I got in houses, and I, I can't figure this out. Uh, in Toronto, it's, it's very sort of ethnic pockets, although it's a very multicultural city. Um, and, you know, my thought was I was working residential, who always has food in the house? Ah, oh, the Italian community is always, they're always cooking. I'm going to go and knock on doors there, at least get in houses, I'll get fed. That was my motivation. So we have different are different motivating factors. So my motivation on twenty dollars to twenty eight seven thirty nine was someone laughed at me. My motivation was to prove them wrong. So when we find the one trigger, the one trigger that motivates us, I got in in, in fantastic shape in ninety days from being a, a fat mess. But I had a trigger. I had a motivator. Okay, I'm not telling you exactly what it was. But, you know, what motivates guys to get in shape? It was on that line. It was nothing to do with them. <laughs> and, um, you know, so the, we have our motivators. We have our triggers. So unless we find that trigger that's going to take us to that place. I remember the, the week I made that sort of money. A, I wasn't counting the money. I had no clue what I was earning. The just checks just showed up two weeks later. You know, I'm going back to the A's. Everything was by check. So, you know, it, the first week was... $20, and then the second week I think was about $400. I didn't look at the $20 and go, I've moved all around the world, I lost money, I put in 60 hours, I did this, I did that. It's a foundation. You know, if you're starting a traditional business, you can go three to five years, barely, you know, still dipping in your savings because you're not even making a wage out of it. 
So I didn't look at it like that. I looked at two guys laughing at me, or three guys laughing at me. And, you know, in the days I was out there knocking on doors, and it was Saturday afternoon, and other things I'd rather do, people were laughing at me in my mind. Carried on. The, you know, it went from, I think it was $20 the first week, and I think 400 the second week. Pretty sure it was that. Then I think it was about 1100 or 1200 And then what I realized, once it hit 4000 which I think took about, must have took about four weeks. I realized after that the company couldn't issue a check over $4,000 without two signatures on it. So I get two checks a week. And then it got to the point, I, I, I wouldn't call her a receptionist, she did a lot more than that, uh, Trish, who I'm still connected with. Um, she, uh, she used to do all my pay, I was always busy, I was always focused on getting the job done, never the money. Field of dreams, you know, build it and they will come. So the payroll would come and I'd stop what I was doing to look at payroll, or if I ever did something like that, it was always to look at, see how well other people had done that, I'd trained. That gave me more fuel. Not for me, it just gave me more in, internal um, pleasure. Do you know, money is just a number, it's just something, it's just there. It doesn't matter what lands on your door, if it's $200 or $200,000 tomorrow, you, you can spend it. It makes no difference. You know, and the, generally the more we get, the more crap we buy, which is something else I got out of. And, um, you know, I just kept going. Because all it was, I'd, I'd said eight weeks, I'll beat you guys. So my focus was always on just the amount, of num the amount of business coming through the office. Not fiscally, just numbers through the door. And, you know, I, I learned foundations of how to do it. And we, you can relate that. I knew for me to get those numbers through the door, when I advertised it back then, it's, you know, pre-internet as it is now, Back then, if I advertised in one paper in Hamilton, Ontario, at a catchment of 100,000 people, and the phone would ring every five minutes. To get their phone ringing every minute, I'd have to do five times the ads. You know, it's not genius stuff. And then I realized someone can't answer them. I need someone else answering the phone. I need two people answering the phones. And then we need to do this more and that more. So I just focused on that. Never the, never the money at the, the other end. So, you know, I work with people now talk about, you know, quite rightly so, make sure you make 20 connections a day, make sure you do, you know, certain things per day, uh, speak with so many people per day, you don't pitch them, just connect. And I do remember one thing, it was about the sixth or the seventh week, um, I'm not always the most diplomatic guy when it comes to people, as you know, sometimes it's like I'm focused yeah, on... I can tell. <laughs> don't know trap. So, we're in this place, <laughs> It's like an industrial unit part thing next to a garage or something, repair shop. And it's gone from me, or two cars, to hundreds of cars every single day. And the woman's come in and said, you know, we can't have this with all the traffic here, da da da, da. The last guy was here, was, uh, he was never this busy. And I looked at her and said, yeah, well, that's probably that's why he's not effing here then, isn't it? You know, go and get out. So we got a, notice, got a notice to quit the building within less than 30 minutes, I would say. We had a week to get out. It didn't bother me. It's just like, you know, I had to make, make a phone call. And we've, we've, um, we have to find someone new to, new to rent. Oh, okay, I thought the lease was over in six months. And I don't think it's anything to do with the lease. What have you done? Nothing. But they want us out within seven days. Something about parking. All right, so nothing you've done. It's just parking. Well, I don't know. And it's and I, I kind of operate like this, like, um, like okay, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing recruiting, everything else has got to be seamless, uh, oh, just in the mix, and we're going like a million miles an hour. By the way, we've got to find somewhere else to move in, really get kitted out, and we've got seven days to do it. Um, I don't know anymore. Let's just make it work. And the girls in the office are going like, we can't do that. Yeah, 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 I know, but we're doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. what, what are you going to do? I don't know, you know. Just find somewhere. What What are you looking for? I don't know. Just find somewhere. It's got to be available immediately. That's the parameter. So we found a place, and they both went, oh, don't go there. It's the worst part of town. And blah, blah, blah. I said, listen, is it available immediately? Yeah, but no one will come there for interviews. Is it available immediately? Yeah, okay. Uh, she said, it's five times the size of this place, and it's a banquet hall. Yeah? 
We don't want a banquet hall. Is it available immediately? Yeah. Okay. Find a builder that's available immediately that can start right now. Should have you not looked at the property yet? So don't worry. We'll, it's the worst part of town. No one will come there. I don't care. Okay. We've got stuff to do. So that's what I did. I do remember the eighth week. Um, <laughs> I worked 138 hours. I remember sleeping on the floor in this office while we were decorating it and getting up the next morning as though in the same clothes. You know, my, my nice Versace suits had paint splatters all over them. I'm just like, who cares? Who cares? You know, at the time, I think I bought a, I bought a black 928 uh, Porsche and the seats were all covered in cement dust outside and there was just like ladders <laughs> stuck out the sunroof. I'm like, what are you doing? The car, ah, who cares, man? We've got to get the deals. We've got to get these deals. We've got to do this in eight weeks. You know, and it just, like, nothing. It, it, literally, you could have walked out the door and shot me through the head and I'd have been a robocop. Yeah, yeah, I'm too busy for that. We've got to do these things. And the eighth week, we did it. So, for me, that's the fuel, but that was the motivation. So, that motivation for some people might, put, might crush them down. You know, oh, someone said I can't do it and because of, you know, the too many people saying it or, you know, one of the things I tell people constantly, never, ever, 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 ever pick up a fucking newspaper or watch the news. Get away from that crap. Okay? It doesn't affect you. You can't do anything about it. I don't know and I don't care. I don't agree. Okay? So once we get that out of the way and the other BS media out of the way, uh, TV and stuff like that, it's the circle of five. So if you're aligned, funnily enough, I just I asked a similar question to a lady who was just, was just interviewing. If you're aligned with people with similar passions, and it doesn't have to be in the same business or the same line of work or the same end. They might be passionate about playing tennis. They might be passionate about reading. But that level of intensity of passion, when you're aligned with people like that, you just raise yourself up. You know, a rising tide raises all boats. Even though one might be a yacht and one might be an ocean liner in different directions, we're all racing together. So my, my thing with that, you know, with the average of the five people we spend the most time with, is to go and look for your motivation. And I, I feel Darren's probably already touched on this. Um, one of the things that I've done for years, I used to, funnily enough, I just saw the post on these properties for sale today. I used to take people from Hamilton, which was, um, in American terms, it would be somewhere like the uh, Bethlehem, an old steel town where the steel's wound down, there was a lot of unemployment. I know Bethlehem's on the up and up now. But, you know, really run down place. So I'd take people on a Sunday from these places and drive them to Toronto down the bridal path, which is where the homes, you know, five, ten, fifteen million dollars. My friend had a Ferrari dealership. And just get the vibration of there is life outside our little white picket fence, small town, whatever mentality. And again, I don't mean that in a bad way. So one of the things uh, I still do to this day is sometimes I've just got to kick it in a notch. And um, again, this morning, and it, it, it's my motivation, if I've not got it there, is not generally material, but there are certain things I like. I love travel. Okay? I don't like camping. If I'm traveling, I want room service. Okay? <laughs> and I, I mean, I've lived in hotels at least half my adult, adult life. I love it. It suits me. Not for everyone. Um, so, you know, sometimes I'll just need to go for a walk and go and sit in a certain coffee shop or go to Ferrari. I mean, I live in a city where no one drives, but I still go to the Ferrari dealership and I just get the energy from it. And I just, you know, little things like that. So if we sat yeah. in, you know, with the guys in, uh, what's it on The Simpsons, Moe's, is that what it's called, Moe's Tavern? If we sat in Moe's Tavern with the winners, okay, it's going to off, rub off on us. If, you know, sometimes, and it doesn't have to be a physical thing, sometimes it can just be, you know, our friend with the hat there, we speak every single day. I speak with certain people every single day because we're all aligned and doing certain things, and then that's certain... Uh, without going off right down the rabbit hole on vibrational frequencies and things like that, because that's another eight hours video you need. Uh, <laughs> we, we're, we're very much aligned with that, and what you find is instead of going out to attract people to go full circle here, they come to you. 
because you you know you, you resonate at a certain level, your contents of a certain nature, you become uh, detached from the bullshit of life, you know the petty stuff that no one cares about, you know and you know there's stuff going on in the world, but there was stuff going on in the world yesterday, there's stuff going on in the world tomorrow, there was stuff going on in the world five years ago and ten years ago and a hundred years ago. And, you know, I maintain, if newspapers had to give positive news, they'd all be bankrupt within a month. I just choose to stay away from that stuff, okay? If I'm working, <laughs> I find my own motivation, I find what drives me, and to some people that could be something material, to some people it could be family, to some people it could be love, to some people it could be travel, to some people, it, I don't know. And most of the time there's a balance. The most, you know, you know, the most common thing they ask me: What motivates you? What would you, you know, what would you like the most? And I want to be a millionaire. And generally, they'll end, end up put the LOL afterwards, and I'm just like, here we go, you know. And um, like it's a big deal. There's, I don't know, there's millions of millionaires out there. Um, <laughs> well, you know, that is, and okay, so if I put a billion dollars in your spare bedroom, but you can't touch it, what would that do for you? Let's say I just sent you a bank statement with eight zeros on the back end. You can't spend it. What would that do for you? Nothing. That's not the motivation. Is the motivation, what's it called, like the highway down the west coast of California, convertible Ferrari, I won't say wind in the hair, but you know, wind on the skull. And uh, is the motivation to be on the yacht? Is the motivation to be on the beach drinking margaritas? Is the motivation to be in Africa doing a bunch of give back, helping those less fortunate? Is the motivation to be spending eight hours a day with your children? Is your motivation to be the girl at school or the guy at school that wouldn't have anything to do with you uh, and you're going to go to a, what do they call these things? I never get invited, strangely. Reunion. <laughs> a school reunion. 30, whatever. You're 40 years old, 30 years old. You go to school, you reunion, and you don't want to show up there with the big L on, on the thing. Oh, hi, how, are you? how have you done since you left school? Oh, I've done really, really well. <laughs> Bought some new shoes last year. You want to go back there to see, you know, the hot girl or the hot guy. You want to show up in your Ferrari or you want to show up, not necessarily like that, but you want to show up with that level, that level of uh, confidence, enthusiasm, all that, but it's got to be from within. It's got to be sincere. It, it's... It's not like, okay, I'm going to the high school reunion, I'll rent the, I'll rent the tux, I'll rent a Lamborghini, and I'll learn how to stand straight so I don't look like a loser, and I'll walk in and fake it. And people just read right through it. It's yep, a process. It's, not, it's, it's a process. And, the, you know, the, the fastest, quickest way, and this goes back to what you're saying, how do you go from, from let's say we're just going to use the term zero, because we all started at zero, how do you go from zero to a million dollars a year, or whatever it may be, whatever crowds you handle, you're not going to do it with the same people you were at at zero. You're going to go through people, and that sounds terrible, but I don't really care. You're going to go through people now, in the words of, I'm pretty sure it was Lee Iacocca, lead, follow, or get the fuck out of the way. I, you know, we all have people that we follow, and they're leaders, whether they like the term or not. You know, I'm not. I'm a guy that just doesn't like labels or terms. Um, so, if, if I want to know how to make a billion dollars a year, I've never done that. I'm going to connect with people who do, but I also want to make sure that those people are doing it as I'd want to do it. So, if someone's making a billion a year spinning plates on Wall Street, just making numbers appear. That's not something that I'm comfortable with. If they're making a billion a year but giving 900 million of it to a charitable course, you know what? A guy like that I could latch on to. I want to learn what that guy's doing. I'm just using this as a, you know, as an example. So, you know, lead follower, get the fuck out of the way, is find out who we're following. We don't have to portray ourselves as leaders for people to follow us because we, we will, you know, people will see, not hear. So, you know, I could tell you anything on earth, and some people will believe it, and some people think it's bullshit. When you see things as a reality, then the belief jumps up. But the, the, the real reality is this. 
there's going to be blockers, and those blockers a lot of the time are going to be people, because they deep down don't want you to succeed. They want to be, they want you to be like them. So when someone tells you you can't do something, it's generally because they can't do it, they don't know how to do it, or more often than the case, they're afraid to do it based on what other people's perceptions are. I really don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. A lot of people say that, I actually don't. I couldn't care less. It makes no difference to me. I'm enjoying my life, and my life is not suitable for everyone else, the same way as everyone else is not suitable for mine. So if someone doesn't like it, I'm not going to change my mind to please them. I'm just going to go ahead with it anyway. So if my life is, you know, early days in this industry, I was kind of afraid of what I did as far as how I'd be perceived by others. Now I don't care. It's like, take it or leave it. I don't bother. You know, I'm doing my thing. I, I, whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't affect my life. So I'm just doing it anyway. And the, the sooner Tony, you, yeah. Yeah, th those are some awesome, like, awesome, awesome, powerful points. And I love how you went from, you know, like, the whole entire bad mouthing of the, the, the amateurs who have no idea what they're doing to really coming into focus of you know what it takes to go out and create results. Like that was just badassery right there. And you know I want to wrap it up because I feel like people who don't get this definitely need to connect with you. Yeah. And and the people that do get this definitely need to connect with you. But so that we can wrap it up um, what do you feel thing that you would want to leave people with so that they can produce results? I know we talked about being selfless, right? And that, that's important. That is so important, so important, so important. And I know you talked about motivation and figuring out what triggers are, but if there is one last thought before we, you know, let people know how they can get in touch with you, um, them to break through their shells and literally ignore all of the bullshit, how could they do that and just get into straight production mode? Right. I can't answer that in one word. I'll tell you a few things. Number one, change your physiology. Stand up. Okay? If you go and see Tony Robbins, he will do this. Okay? So if someone slumped down on the thing, how are you doing? Okay? Change our physiology. What do we do by that? Starts with the body. Starts with go to the gym, go for a walk, do something. Okay? Sh shock our body, our physiology out of it. Okay? Cut out, and this is the same thing I tell everyone that works for me. Okay? If you have a TV, turn it around, turn it off. Don't tell me it was just on when I walked in the room. It's got to go. Never pick up a newspaper. And I will know whether you have or you haven't. So that, uh, sometimes life is harsh. Sometimes, you know, there's, there's a couple of little exercises. I'm gonna, I'll leave you with this. It's a simple way. And I'm, I'm going to e-book this. Um, find out what you don't want in your life. That's often easier than finding out what we want. I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be hungry. I don't want to live in this place. I don't want to live in this city. I don't want to do this. I don't want that. I don't want to be married to this person. I don't want to... Do the school run, I, you know what, I, whatever. I don't want to be fat, whatever. Find out what you don't want. Write them down, ten things. Then write out the exact opposite. It's easier to write out what you do want once you figure out what you don't want. Then, mm -hmm. on a different paper, figure out who the five people you spend the most time with are. And then merge the two. And this is it will take longer to explain this whole thing. Merge the two meaning if four of the five people I hang out with are obese, but my target is to get in great shape, are they beneficial to that? Or are they hampering that? If someone is um, an alcoholic who's determined not to drink, and all five of his school buddies go out to the bar every night, you know what? He's got to dump his school buddies. And sometimes, you know, not sometimes, we've got to make these rash decisions to find out what's most important to us. So find out what we don't want, write down the opposites, write down ten things we don't want, can be more, <clears throat> write down ten. But it's the, the written down ones have got to be in the positive. So, you know, I don't want to be broke, is you know what we don't want. Okay. 
what we do want is I want, you know, I'm going to have, or I am, right in the present, a million dollars cash in the bank. Or I am uh, financially stable by paying my bills as they come in. Um, whatever it may be. But then we've got to write down those five people. That's everything. Those five people are everything. Okay. Well, you know, I spend all my time with my kids and my husband. And da, da, da. what does your husband do? Oh, he doesn't. Then this, you know, someone's not going to like this. I don't care. I've had this a few times where I've seen people's lives ruined by their partners. What does he do? Oh, he's unemployed because he has a bad back. All right. Um, you work with me, or you're with your husband. You're not doing both. I can't work miracles. Okay, and sometimes you just see people that are stuck in toxic relationships in the states get out. Of it. <laughs> um, here's the reality: if you want a different result completely, you've got to make a lot of serious changes in your life. Not you specifically, and people in general. And you've got to rattle those cages. And to just move, well, you know what? I'm I'm going from a raging alcoholic who's looking for a I was almost, I was almost going to say I was speaking with my Irish friend, but that's, that sounds very stereotypical. Um, I'm going to go from I'm a raging alcoholic. <laughs> I'm only drinking. What was his, he said? He's one of the guys at the bar said, "Yeah, he has a dry month for the dry month. He only drinks coffee, coffee and Bailey's." I'm going. How is that a dry month? He said, "Well, in his mind, it is. All right, that's that's not a dry month. I know that. You know that. But in his mind, he thinks that." I said, so he's not, you know, it's not working. You, you know, if that's the case or that's what it is, you know, we've got to make, it, if you're 400 pounds overweight, you've got to quit your job in the cake store. You know, it's not doing you any good. <laughs> it, it's like we've got to make these things. We've got to make these choices, make these decisions. And that's it. So 10 things you don't like, write the opposite. Five people you spend the most time with, are they detrimental or are they beneficial to the ten places or things that you want? So if you spend all your time with broke people, if you're in a bit directly to business here, if you're in a business that targets broke people, because people are always going to say they can't afford it. It doesn't matter if your deal is a dollar or a million dollars. Okay, that's just a mindset. It's just a mindset. If I had a deal for you tomorrow and it was a million dollars, could you get the money? The answer is it depends on the deal. You know, if, if I if someone had a deal for me now, exactly. you need a million dollars cash tomorrow, it pays out ten the day after, can you get the money? Yes. How are we going to go about it? I have no clue. But I know if the deal stacks up and you get ten times your money back in a day, yeah, there's, that deal's done. So, but there's always going to be people that it doesn't matter if it's a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. But the challenge is the the frequency that these people resonate at on the small numbers. You, at those five people you spend the most time with, are going to have that kind of mindset. If you're, you know, wanting to raise your game and you wanted to do the, the seven figure earner, you got to you got to be speaking with seven figure earners every day. No one can get you to a point that they haven't been to themselves. So when I say, oh yeah, blah 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 blah, and someone in the company made Something, something, something. Okay, connect me with that guy. Well, I can't get you to him, but I can get you to my manager. Okay, your manager's no good to me. Okay, your sponsor's no good to me. Okay, I've probably done, you know, without sounding big headed here, I might have gone further than your manager. What's, where's he going to take me? He's only going to bring me down. We can only improve by, in every area of life, by getting a new master. I think there's a quote. Is it? And David Ben Gurion, I believe it is. When an expert tells you something can't be done, go and find a better expert. Mm. There's one for you. So James, listen. If someone wants to reach me, if they've got to spend yeah. seven thousand hours to kill for the rest of their life, all they need to do is get me on a hangout, and I will chat my brains out. Uh, <laughs> The real Tony Cohen on <laughs> YouTube. Uh, what else am I on? What else is out there? LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. I don't know how it works. I've got about 10,000 people on it I don't know what to do with. Maybe, maybe I should just put a thing up saying, I'm hiring now and see what happens. No, maybe not. They've all got, they're all white guys with suits and ties. Maybe I should just delete that account. <laughs> oh, he's a racist. Okay, shut up. Yeah. Um, 
So on what else? What else am I on? Oh, I have a, a page on Facebook, The Real Tony Cohen. Uh, generally, it's a good party trick, this one, James. Okay, there's no one watching here, so I'll tell you this in secret. Don't tell anyone. Figure out a way that anyone puts your name in Facebook, it's always on top. It's the greatest party trick ever for the opposite sex. But no one's watching this, so they won't hear it. This is our secret. So when you go, oh yeah, just tap my name in Facebook, Tony Cohen, there's thousands of them in there. <laughs> Are you on top? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm always on top. How do you do that? No, I don't know. Can you give me your number? Sure, whatever. You know what? I actually don't know how it works, but it just works. Maybe if you just use it. <laughs> but it makes me look like a genius. So yeah, I'm on there. I'm on uh, where else? Work with the real Tony Cohen dot com. on there. I, I'm, this week I'm going through a tech. By the end of the week, I'm going to be a tech genius. Well, actually, no. By the end of the week, I'm going to have the phone number of a tech genius that will make me look smart. You know, I, I got posted the other days. I love helping. I love it. One of the guys I work with. I love helping people. And he's the world's most inept tech idiot. I thought, hmm. I was on the phone with him for two hours last night, but that's me he's talking about. Um, so yeah, I'm easy to reach. Um, you know, my phone number's out there and everything. So wants to talk. And by the way, guys, please throw your spam at me, but make sure you send me five thousand for the hour for me to look at it first, because otherwise, <laughs> I'll look at anything you've got, any pile of crap you've got, five thousand an hour. Seriously, man, I'm, I'm mercenary on this stuff. Guys, I, I, you know, I love to work with people. I love working with people. James, I've really enjoyed chatting with us. I think you spoke too much and I was too quiet, but we can raise <laughs> that, James. So listen, this is me without coffee. I'm going to go out. It's a beautiful day. The sun's out. I'm going to go out, have a coffee, have a coffee, as we say. I'm going to connect with people. I've got a magic device that opens every key to the city in every city in the world. And... Uh, Thanks so much. You're you're welcome, bro. And you know this was refreshing. Um, you know, for you to just lay it all out and tell people what they really need to hear, I think is you know people that's connected with me on Facebook, people that are connected me with me via my blog and email. This is awesome because this is like a breath of fresh air. Uh, I love you. Appreciate you. Thanks for taking the time out, Tony. Um, I look forward to doing. This again, um, because this this was awesome. And if it was live, like this was live, I'm, I'm sure I would have just kept letting you go. But you know, guys, connect with Tony um, because as you can see, he's powerful and he's, he knows exactly what it is that he's talking about. Because this is some of the stuff that he has shared with me uh, in private conversations on Facebook. So this is a uh, marketing sensei series episode number four, James Jordan. The best networker live coming to you today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take.